I love people like our next guest. He discovered an abandoned lot in his neighborhood and transformed it into a garden that has been feeding his community for almost four years. From Brooklyn, New York, please welcome Kofi Thomas. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. I'm fascinated by this because uh, you uh, got into gardening. You weren't really a gardener, yeah. but you were kind of helping someplace else. Uh -huh. Then you find an abandoned lot and yeah. you somehow transform that into a 13,000 square foot garden. Yeah. How did you, I mean, there's so much to learn. What did you have to do in order to make that happen? Well, I had to learn a whole lot real fast. All right, so basically, I was sitting down minding my business at another garden, my elder Hernan Pagan told me there was a garden I was being abused, neglected around the corner. I was in disbelief, but I walked over anyway, and there was this giant place that was full of years of trash, like layer on layer on layer, like a lasagna of debris. And I felt sad, but I was like, this is a neighborhood that needs a garden, needs green space. So I got with him and some of the neighbors, and we started just kind of like brainstorming, how do we turn this lot into a thriving garden. And so we just got busy, got some shovels, some trash bags, and got to work. Yeah, but that's, and then you have to learn how to actually put the, the right things in, and fertilizer, and, and garden, and all of that. Oh yes, I make up a lot of stuff as I go along. Um, I had no idea, but just from talking with like elders and neighbors, I had to learn uh, things I should not know. Like right now, I'm an amateur electrician, I'm an amateur plumber, I'm like a mid-level carpenter, um, but yeah, these things I had to do to get this space up and running for my neighborhood. Yeah, and so why was this so important to you to create this garden? <sighs> well, I live in Bushwick, Brooklyn, and it's an area that uh, has really been neglected for, with, uh, in terms of uh, food, the environment, and what I did was I knew that the garden could be a vehicle, a vehicle towards social justice, towards racial justice, towards environmental justice, and I just wanted to uh, have that place be special in my neighborhood. So the why for me was I wanted to change the trajectory of my neighborhood. And you, you have. Thank you. You have. Um, for people who don't know what a food desert is, explain, because that's where you live, explain what a food desert is. Of course, so uh, a food desert, or sometimes referred to as a food, uh, like a food apartheid, is there are places in our country where there is not access to healthy food, organic food, food without pesticides, and when something like that happens, you're actually denying a whole population access to a healthy life. And so what I want to do is try to change uh, our access, our availability, our lifestyles, and the health of my whole community. And it, it, it's so important because like, you know, there's just, there are no grocery stores that have vegetables or fruits, they just have fast food and it's only gonna make people sick, only gonna make people unhealthy. And the fact that you're growing this and serving so many people, how many people have you, I mean, it's been tons and tons of food, right? Yes, yes, we, to date, we have, uh, distributed more than 14 tons of fresh, free, organic food to the hood. <laughs> Amazing. I think during these crazy times, we need to keep looking for the helpers and heroes. My next guest has spent the past decade transforming his community, one garden at a time. From South Central Los Angeles, please welcome Ron Finley, also known as the Gangsta Gardener. How'd you come up with the name Gangsta Gardener? Like, what, what set you claiming, homie? Well, I'm claiming the gangster sex. Gangsters, if you ain't a gardener, you ain't gangster. <laughs> <laughs> now, you started 10 years ago because you wanted your community... Or so. To, or go 10 or so. 10 or, you know, back in the 1800s, we did it in, you know, at school. That's yeah. how I learned to do it. That's how you learned at school. That's how you learned how to garden. Well... We got a half-ass lesson in school because you would get the Petri dish and you put the paper towel, did you do that? Yeah, you put yeah, the seed see? And like, oh my God, you see it grow and then they go next. Right. They didn't show us the sexy part. No. The sexy part is put that in the soil. Yeah. Okay, so you can get a hundred more seeds and you can sell that. In a meal. 
Come on. In a meal. So th why did they not give us that, that part they don't of the want, lesson? Because they, they want you to go to the grocery store. They don't want, to know, want you to know how to feed hey. yourself. That's how I well, feel see, anyways. Well, what Mr. Paris says, if you can't feed yourself, you can't free yourself. That part. That part. <laughs> now, you started doing these community gardens. Like, you started, like, <laughs> doing random gardens in the community, right? And then the city got on you. And Man. then what did you do? I didn't stop. Uh, I, well, long story sh short, kind of, sort of, uh, I had an arrest warrant out for me. Mm. So I got in trouble for, for growing food on this strip of land called the Parkway. Some mm -hmm. people call them hail strips or whatever. And um, I fought them. You know, I said, you're not bringing any healthy food to our neighborhoods. Don't stop me from doing it. You're not bringing any beauty to our neighborhood. Don't stop me from trying to change my uh, environment. And. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, um, it happened twice. Wow. But I, I, I wound up getting a law change in LA where you can plant, you know, you can now plant food on your parkway throughout well, the whole I city. I commend you for that. Thank you, baby. See, yeah. out here getting laws changed. Getting out here getting gangster. That part, that's gangster. <laughs> when you're changing laws. <laughs> now, some people say they call South Central a food desert. Now, I know what a food desert is. Can you explain that for the people I, that don't know what that means? I call them, a, I call it places like that a food prison, mm. you know, uh, because you have to ask permission for everything. You don't, and it's by design that there's no healthy food in our neighborhoods, in these black, brown, red neighborhoods, you know, because they're keeping us in a certain uh, mindset and they're keeping our health in a certain place. So um, I went again. I'm, I'm totally against it. You can't, don't stop me from trying to from trying to be healthy. You know, right. from trying to beautify my community. And that's that's what this is all about. This is this is not a, even about food to me, Tiff. It's it's about humanity. Right. You know, first and foremost. Right. It's, it's about equality. Um, I tell people, food is that of what I do. Food is about. To me, it's about that much. Right. You know, first of all, this is, this is about freedom. I'm trying to show people how to be free. Now, now, how hard is it to start a garden? Because that garden could be your freedom garden. I like to call mine my victory. Yeah, I, but... heard, you, I heard you pretty deep in it. <laughs> yeah, I like to grow food. <laughs> but how hard is it to start one? It's not. I mean, actually, you know, if we get this cup, put a hole in it so the, the plant won't choke itself, you can have a garden. It doesn't, people have this thing, it's hard work. It's not hard work. People, you know, people have been growing food for millennia. We've been well, always it, growing food. I mean, food no, is well, necessity. But to see the thing with, with your cousins, they have this disdain because of that. Well, My cousins? Yeah, your cousins. Oh, you gonna put them on me? Yeah, you, okay, well, that, you know what that. that. What was that called? Ron, Ron, it, we, gonna be, we gonna be back with more Ron while you talking about my cousins. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of this. Now, Ron, I'm, I'm gonna run something by you, okay? Okay. Now, you said, if you, if you said, change your food can change your life? If you change your food, you can change your life. Now, what does that mean? Just like that. I mean, food becomes part of our DNA. Mm-hmm. Because you're eating it, you're ingesting it. So a lot of times in our neighborhood, there's no health, as you know, there's mm -hmm. no healthy food around. Mm -hmm. So what is that going to... Uh, it's, it's going to change your, the metabolism of your body. And so when you have a child that's been eating all of these chips and all this garbage and, and mm -hmm. you know, all this manufactured food, all of a sudden when they start eating a real, real food, they don't like the taste of it because their, taste, their body has become adopted to this... Manufactured food. There you but go. But I'm going to tell you, when I started eating out my garden, my whole everything, I just lit up. Now tell me this, though. Oh, why on my big leafy green vegetables, <laughs> I be having this white mold? Now, how do you get rid of the white mold? Powdery mildew. Yeah. Um, vinegar. Vinegar? Vinegar, milk. Um, uh -huh. There's a lot of different substances you can, and you, all natural, all natural stuff. I'm, and that's what I, I don't put any like chemicals whatsoever in my, in my garden. Me because neither. you got to think you're ingesting that. Mm -hmm. and my thing is to show these kids the, had a young age, the beauty, the alchemy, the magic. Cause I mean, think that, that it's, it's, it's magic. I mean, right. when you think of this teeny seed. It really is magic. I'll be no, out there like, on. I'm a real unicorn. <laughs> Look what I did. I took this little dog poop and I put it right there and I made mushrooms. I can do anything. 
I well, mean, no, that's, that, that's just me. That's, no, it ain't. It's not just you. <laughs> that's the freedom. But imagine, I mean, I, I'm getting the experience that because I, I got a master class mm -hmm. that you guys should check out if you haven't. And with that master class, people from all over the world are sending me these testimonies. And I mean, sometimes they, I ain't even quitting. It's like gangsters <laughs> don't cry, but damn, they be having you tearing up <laughs> right? around this piece. And now they got now they got my master classes. They, they started in the California penal system. Oh, so wow. now they're showing them they're prison, growing food in men's prison. and women's uh, That's men's beautiful. and women prisons in uh, California. Now, uh, I think last week they went to New York. So wow. it's, it's going to be the first master class that they get to see. Wow. We fell in love with our next guest when we met him four years ago, and here's why. My name is Akbar Cook. I am the new principal of Westside High School here in beautiful Newark, New Jersey. Westside is located, we call it the number blocks, and bad things usually happen on the number blocks. Some of my babies were homeless. Other babies are coming from homes where there's no parent, where they cannot wash clothes in their house, and I knew I had to do something about it. It was my idea to bring in some washers and dryers in here. Let's take care of that obstacle. We have five commercial washers, five commercial dryers, and our laundry facility that we were able to open just in time for the school year. I'm just so happy I'm nervous that I'm on Ellen. This yeah. is amazing. <laughs> wow. These kids are really lucky to have you. I really care, and I want them to know that love. They know I'm there. I'm never leaving their side, so they're my babies. We wanted to bring them here. We couldn't bring them here, but Jeannie <laughs> went to them. <laughs> I feel like even though Cook our principal, like, he don't really feel like our principal. He feel like more like one of us because he laughed with us, he joked with us. And like most of all, I can't remember that he told us what family mean at my school. Forget about me, I love you. <laughs> From Westside High School in Newark, New Jersey, please welcome Principal Akbar Cook. You were a contestant on Amazing Race. Yes. How was that? Oh my God, so I'm a 45-year-old man that never been out of the country. So imagine my surprise, I go to London and I get stopped, hey, you're the teacher from Ellen, the laundry guy. And I'm just like, oh, so I'm taking uh, selfies in France. And so thank you for making me a household name. I appreciate it. Oh, well, I, I, Mark re recognized you backstage. Yeah, so Mark, he had, he had liked something I did on Instagram the other day. And I'm like, that's Mark Wahlberg. He has a blue check. So it was great, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's amazing. We had you on the show twice. We loved what you were doing. So we gave you some money. Tell everybody what you did with that. So I got $100,000 and I had to be morally responsible with it. And I sat on it, Ellen. I sat on it for about two years until I got the idea. I said, well, Nork is a food desert. So how can I, uh, you know, talk about is a liquor store, it's a church fast food restaurant, liquor store, church fast food restaurant, all up and down my corridor. There's no uh, fresh produce and the stuff that we get on is so stepped on, there's no nutrients. So I said, you know what? Let me get with Jersey Kids, some other folks. And I said, I'm gonna hire the sexiest farm I could find. And now we have the Ellen DeGeneres Urban Farm. Can you believe that? Amazing. I'm, I'm so flattered by that and honored. What do you, it looks like you're growing just about everything. What are you growing? Oh, so don't get me in trouble with customs, but we have uh, <laughs> apricot trees from Venezuela. I have fig trees. I have uh, dates. I have bitter melons. I have collard greens. I have, Ellen, I have everything. And the, the, the great thing about it, Ellen, is we're bottling this stuff up. So we have our own hot sauce. And the thing with the hot sauce, now my kids get the, get to sell the stuff on my website, Westside Ave, and they get the proceeds. So we created an e-commerce for the kids, and now they no longer have to go out and get these odd jobs. They're making residual income while they're in school, getting those business associate degrees and things of that nature. Um, we're going to... We're going to remind you and tell you to come to our, our website to show you how to support those kids, because that's amazing, because they need those jobs, and it keeps them there in school instead of having to go out, because it's a really dangerous neighborhood. Um, and this must have helped during the pandemic tremendously. Tremendously, Ellen. Uh, so we started the Lights On program four years ago, because I was losing kids to gun violence, and everything had stopped. As soon as COVID hit, I lost two more kids to gun violence. And so I had to change the uh, Lights On program. We morphed it into a grab and go. So now with the grab and go, we not only service my kids and the community, but we service our, our neighbors without homes and our, uh, and our senior citizens. So now 500, I want to say 500 meals are made Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But more importantly, we're giving them the, uh, the fresh produce from the farm as well. That's amazing. That's amazing. So 
Other schools have heard about this, right? Yes, yeah, so it took some brave principals. My OSG network, my principals in New York City, they were the first to say, Cook, come over here. So I had 12 schools in New York City, 15 in Staten Island, two in Vegas, two in LA. We just started talking in Virgin Island, and now we're going in April to the Ivory Coast and Cameroon to put it there. But more importantly, they all have a food pantry, and now they give out uh, fresh produce and food twice a month, every month. Akbar, that's amazing. That's amazing. We have to take a break. More with Akbar after this. We're back with a great guy. This is Principal Akbar Cook, who started the Ellen DeGeneres Urban Farm at his school. And I, I really, it just, I can't tell you what that means, that you used the money, you waited, you sat on it, and decided that's what you wanted to do. And then that you named it after me and created a mural. I saw the picture of next to the farm. I mean, that's amazing. That. <laughs> So, so what better way to say thank you? I mean, you changed the trajectory of me and my kids, and we're forever grateful. But I want you to think about, as a straight black man, I'm putting a gay white woman on my building in an urban district, and it says, be kind to one another. What impact that has on my community and my kids. My LGBT community and my school are so underrepresented. I think when folks think of murals, they got the go-tos. We got the Obamas, we have, you know, the Harriet Tubmans, we have the Roberto Clementes, but it's, it's not a lot of representation for LGBTQ, and I just was graduating my first transgender student. So all of this comes full circle, man, and I'm so thankful, Ellen, that my, my board of education, my superintendent, and my mayor, my mayor said, listen, if this is what my city looks like, we need to represent them. So, Cook, you go ahead, and we got your back 100%. So thank you, Ellen. <laughs>